Numerical Computation, Chapter 2, Video 1. In this chapter, we study how to interpolate a data set with a polynomial. Here is the problem description. Given a data set with m plus 1 points, say we denote them by xi, yi as a point, where i is an index running from 0, 1, 2, all the way to n, here we require the axes to be distinct and uh, you don't have to sort it. But if you sort it, it's fine. That's not necessary. Now, with this data set, we want to find a polynomial of degree n. So we, here we write out the general form of a polynomial of degree n, which reads pn of x equals to a sub n x to the power n, a sub n minus 1 x to the power n minus 1 and all the way down to a1 x plus a0 where the a's are the coefficients for the term x to the power a certain power. So we want this polynomial to interpolate the data set meaning the graph of the polynomial must go through all the points which is given in my data set. So, mathematically this says the polynomial Pn evaluated at xi must give me the value yi and this shall hold for all the i's from 0 to n which means there are n plus 1 such i's. So the goal for the problem now becomes the following. We need to determine the coefficients a0, a1, an minus 1, an for the polynomial. So counting them, we see that we have exactly n plus 1 unknowns. So pay attention here. If you have a data set with certain number of points and then you shall fit in a polynomial of degree exactly one less than the total number of points in your data set. So why shall we do this? Any motivation for it? Let's find some reasons. So first motivation could be that you have a discrete data set possibly obtained through some experiment and you are interested in the values between the points of these discrete data set then you need to find some kind of a function that interpolates it second maybe you have a function very complicated to compute for many reasons and then you want to find an approximation for this function and the approximated functions you use are polynomials. So why should the polynomials be favored? Say later on you want to um, differentiate or integrate that function and if the function is complicated and these operations might not be able to be executed exactly or analytically. And then if you have a good approximation using polynomial then we know Computing derivatives, integrations of polynomials are very easy. There will be other applications why we want to do that. Let's start with an, a very simple example. So I have a data set with three points which I listed here. So x0, x1, x2 and y0, y1, y2 in my data set. So I see I have three points, then I need to fit in a polynomial of degree 2. So the goal of this example is to find that polynomial. 
Now we need a polynomial of degree 2, so we can write out the general form of such a polynomial here. So a2x squared plus a1x plus a0 is my polynomial. And as we have stated before that the goal now is to find the coefficients a2, a1, a0. Once they are determined, I have the polynomial. We now use the interpolating property and write out three equations. So let's go through the data set. So the first data point is when x equals to 0, y equals to 1. That means my polynomial evaluated at 0 shall be 1. Putting in x equals to 0, the polynomial is just a0, so a0 equals to 1. And for the second data point, which is x equals to 1, y equals to 0. So the polynomial p2 evaluated at 1 shall equal to 0. So this gives, put x equals to 1 here and 1 here, so I have a2 plus a1 plus a0 must equal to 0. And that's my second equation. And finally, the last data point in here says x equals to 2 over 3 shall give me y equals to 0 0.5. So the polynomial evaluated at 2 over 3, where we plug in x equals to 2 over 3, then I get 4 over 9a2 plus 2 over 3a1 plus a0, that must equal to 0 0.5. And that's my third equation. We see that now we have three linear equations and three unknowns. And we need to find a way of solving it. Now let's repeat the equations here and write them out in a nice and neat way like this. So A0s are lined up here, A1s are lined up here, and A2s are lined up here. These are the same three equations as we had on the previous slide. So in order to solve this in MATLAB, which will be our main tool to deal with these problems, and we want to write this in a matrix and vector form. So you form an unknown vector, which is exactly the coefficients, that's a2, a1, and a0, and you want to write this as a coefficient matrix here times your unknown equals to a load vector on the right hand side. So the load vector is exactly these three numbers in the vector, in the column vector. So 1, 0, 0.5. So how do you form the coefficient matrix here? Well, if you write your equation in this organized form, then it's very easy to find this A matrix, the coefficient matrix. That is, you can simply take the coefficients in front of A and put them in the corresponding position. Say, the first is for A2, so what will be the first column in my matrix? Oh, that will be the coefficients here. So the first one, there is none, which means it's 0. And the second is 1, and the third is 4 over 9, which we put here. And for the second column, I will have 0, 1, 2 over 3, which I put here. And for the third column will be the coefficients in front of a0, which gives me 1, 1, 1, so which I put here. Once you have this in a matrix vector form, then you can give it to MATLAB and ask it to solve. This is becoming very easy. So all you can do it by hand. This is a 3x3 three three matrix where A0 you immediately know. So you can plug in and reduce it to a 2x2 two two matrix. If you like it, you can do it by hand. And this is the result that you will have. So A2 will be negative 3 over 4. A1 is negative 1 over 4. A0 is 1. And putting these coefficients back, we can write out the interpolation polynomial P2. P2 will equal to A2x squared plus A1x plus A0, where the A2, A1, A0 values 
we plug it in. Now let's look at the general case where we have n plus 1 point where n is just a number. So this gives me n plus 1 constraints. So my polynomial Pn evaluated at xi must equal to yi and i runs from 0, 1 all the way to n, n plus 1 data points. Using these n plus 1 points, we can set up n plus 1 equations. Let's check. For the first point, x0, y0, it says the polynomial evaluated at x0 must give y0. So putting in x0 in the polynomial, so I get x0 to the power n times a n, x0 to the power n minus 1 times a n minus 1, and dot 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 all the way down to x0 to the power 1 times a1 plus a0 shall give me y0. So this is my first equation. And now considering the second data point, x1, y1, and do a totally similar thing. So the equation we get will be very similar to the previous one, except where all the x zeros are now replaced by x1. So we have x1 to the power n, a n, plus x1 to the power n minus 1, a n minus 1, and so on to x1, a1, plus a0, and this shall give me y1. So it shall be pretty clear how the rest of the data in my data set can be used and set up totally m plus 1 equations. So let's write out the last equation for xn, yn. So it's the same as the previous ones except where all the xi's are now changed into xn. So I have xn to the power n, a n, plus dot 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 all the way down to xn to the power 1, a1, plus a0, which is actually a0 times xn to the power 0. And this shall return the value yn. So that will be the equation number n plus 1. So we see that we have n plus 1 equations and we have n plus 1 unknowns. And look at these equations. They are all linear equations for the unknown. My unknowns are a n, a n minus 1, and all the way down to a0. And here it's a bit strange because we are used to see x as the unknown and a as the coefficient, and here their rows are reversed. So all the x, n, x, i's, they are actually data. They are given numbers. And the a's, the coefficients, are my unknowns where I try to find the answer. Again, we would put this in a matrix vector form. So we form a matrix and a vector. So the vector is my unknown, which is the coefficient a n, a n minus 1 down to a 0. And then the right hand side is just the right hand side of my equation. And the coefficient matrix are exactly the coefficients in front of all these a's written out already in this nice form. We only need to position them in their corresponding place in the matrix. So the first column will be all these axes to the power n, and the second column will be all these axes to the power n minus 1, so on and so forth, and the second last one will be all these axes to the power 1, and the final ones will be 1, which is all these axes to the power 0.
Well, this could be easily, well, if it's okay to solve, in MATLAB. Let's take a look at this system of linear equations. So we have x times a equals to y, and this x here is a m plus 1 times m plus 1 matrix, right? So once your data set xi's are given, this matrix is given. And this matrix carries the name of its kind of a founder. It's called the Van der Mond matrix. And A here is an unknown vector, has length m plus 1. And the y is called the load vector, which is given. It's the data set, the y values. It has length m plus 1 as well. So here's a theorem, kind of a good news for this problem. It says that if the xi's are distinct, which is actually a requirement we put on our data set, then the van der Mond matrix is non-singular, so it's invertible, so its determinant is not zero, basically says that this system of linear equation here should have a unique solution. And now, to make things even sweeter, in MATLAB, the Van der Mond matrix is already implemented. So you can type in the command van der, and you send in an input variable x, which is a vector that contains all the interpolation points x, if you put it in there. And you give that, and this would generate the van der Mond matrix for you. So you don't even need to write any code. Now here is a piece of bad news. If you have reasonably large amount of points to interpolate, let's say n equals to 9, so the x matrix is 10 by 10, then the condition number of that matrix is very large. I know we haven't talked about condition numbers yet. This is something from linear algebra, which we will get to when we learn numerical linear um, algebra, when we come to that later in some later chapters. So if the condition number is very large, what does it mean? It means to find a solution for this system of linear equations. The solution is very sensitive to perturbation on the data. So you know you are sending these numbers in to the MATLAB to find the answers. So there is always some round-off error. And if the condition number is large, then these round-off errors are being amplified by a large factor and showing up in your solution. So your solution would not be that accurate. And also the solution will be much harder to find. So, um, Van der Mond matrix method is very intuitive and very straightforward, um, but probably not the most efficient or elegant method to handle the situation of interpolating points with polynomials. So, um, in this chapter later, we'll study two more other methods. One is called Lagrange polynomial, and the other one is Newton's divided difference. These are somewhat more advanced methods and better designed to suit the goal.